I have this book, and I'm going to read uh, two very short things from it. Um, they are ten dollars, and if you buy one, I'll give five of those dollars to Spiderweb Salon. I would give all ten, but I'm engaged now. <laughs> a family to support, <laughs> and she's really uptight. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. I love you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're number one. Okay. <laughs> All right. My fox and I had a pajama bottoms kind of relationship. We were microwavers. We sucked ice cubes and put tequila in orange soda. My fox would curl into me and become very, very small. Hardly more than a handful. My fox said, I need space, then slid herself into a white cocktail dress and went out. She didn't want to break up, she just wanted a certain kind of freedom, the kind of freedom that was jeopardized by the very idea of discussing it with me. It was not that she wanted to hide it from me, necessarily. She just didn't want that part of her life connected to me. Some things were for us, a pint of ice cream, a cache of cola bottle caps, pictures from our trips to the zoo. Other things were not for me. A white dress, her pierced ears, perfume and not pulling out. <laughs> At first she kept her freedom things in a small hole in the other closet. She took them out as needed and kept the closet locked in between. And then she moved it all into a box. One day she moved the box into a separate house. It's not a nicer house, but a different house. And then she was in that house most of the time, and her hole in the other closet sat empty. She said, I'm going to need an ice cream pint for my other house. She said, I'm going to need a bottle opener, too. She said, we could select one or two of our photos from the zoo and use the other frames for newer, better pictures, no? She said, I'd like you to look the other way now. She said, I'd like you to think of something else. That was not about you, Andy. <laughs> we have an apartment. <laughs> all right, this one's about a rabbit, and then I'll leave. <laughs> The rabbit was a prop, that's all. A dead thing. And we made a joke out of it. Took the chocolates out of Kenny's fundraiser box and shoved the rabbit in. I'll tell you right now, I'd do it again if I were in the same situation. Not that I could be, but I'm just saying, if I was. Because there was no harm in what we did when we did it. The police came looking for faults, but it was nobody's fault, not really. Because we had no idea what Kenny would do, and we could never have guessed, no matter how much we thought about it, that Kenny might do what Kenny did. The rabbit was Roy's, or Roy's dad, really. And the idea was mine, to hide it in Kenny's bag as a joke. Then it was Roy who said to take out the chocolates and put it in the fundraiser box. And we kept the chocolates, yeah, and spent the afternoon eating them and thinking about what we'd done and what we'd seen. Kenny just losing it and hitting that poor geek with the symbol and all the blood that sprayed up and out like a sli tire slicing a rain puddle. But there's no why to how Kenny acted, right? We ran because we knew we would get pinned with it, and I was a little scared, I guess. And then we sat under the cement thing by the creek and ate the chocolates and talked about the whole thing, and Roy made a good point that we hadn't swung any cymbals, we didn't brain any geeks. We made a joke with a dead rabbit. Roy's dad, he's one of those jokey magicians. He makes a living off jokes with dead rabbits and birds, pulling them out of hats and back pockets. His whole thing is that something goes wrong and something winds up dead or ruined. <clears throat> Everything's a mess. But do you think that he would be the one to blame if some nut in the audience stormed the stage because he pretended to kill his assistant? Roy and I sat under the cement thing and Roy said how it wasn't our fault what Kenny did. Not really. And it made sense because I mean, we didn't hurt anybody. We made a joke in bad taste maybe, but we hadn't hurt anybody. It was Kenny who had hurt somebody. So Roy and I just ate chocolates under the bridge and threw garbage into the clear water and talked about, I don't know, girls until Roy had to go somewhere and he wouldn't tell me. He's always going. He doesn't know I'm talking to you, but 
he could make sense of it, I think. If you really thought about it, where I'm coming from. Roy is smart and makes sense to me. And I make sense to him. He's crazy too, and I love him, and we're best friends. So you can do what I want, I guess. Suspend us, expel us, because truth is, I already know this isn't all there is. It doesn't end here. Not now. Not unless someone brains you with a symbol. And I'll bet whatever <laughs> that when my time comes, there'll be nothing in my power to stop it anyway, no matter how many dead rabbits I leave just sitting there in Roy's backpack. <laughs> <laughs>